welcome uh, aboard the cockpit of a Boeing 737. It is, of course, uh, a simulator, but for those of you who don't know, you'll uh, make some models of planes. Boeing 737s are used widely throughout Europe, across all the major airlines, really, uh, flying those kind of short-haul airlines. So this is a very realistic model of it. Uh, and Captain Mike Redrup, a former British Airways pilot himself, uh, is head of training here. Now, we'll have a chat to him in a minute, but first he's just going to simulate what would happen if the plane flew through volcanic ash. Okay, so um, at the moment the, the crew are flying in clear sky and uh, the first indication they would probably get would be a misting of the sky um, in front of them. Um, we can only simulate it as an increase in cloud um, as such. And automatically the visibility goes. So now typically associated with the volcanic ash they would start smelling an acrid smell in the flight deck. They may see glowing around the windscreen of the aircraft, a bit like St Elmo's fire. And already they're being very cautious about uh, what may happen next. Now, this is their first indications of an engine problem. And today, the first one that will be affected will be engine number one. You can hear the surging of the engine. That's what those bangs are. That's what the bangs are. Would the passengers hear those bangs? The passengers would hear the bangs, um, particularly those adjacent to the engines. And the passengers in the, that area will actually see torsion coming out of the back of the engine. When you say it's the engine surging, what do you mean by that? It's, it's trying to work, is it? It's trying to work because the, the ash has actually um, put out the combustion chamber flames, but every now and then those flames are still being fed by fuel and you get ignition. So it, it's a, almost like a, a firework banger that every now and then it's a continuous fuel being thrown on the fire. So we're still flying on one engine, so we still have some capability in the plane and it's relatively safe at this stage. Exactly right. It might not sound like it, but you've now shut down the second engine as well. And the pilot, the second engine now has failed. And that's surging. They would almost certainly be running through the volcanic ash checklist. And very shortly they'll be planning to put on the um, oxygen masks. One of these manuals would be on board every flight deck or every, every plane. On every flight has a, a quick reference handbook and pilots refer to them as the QRH. And you will see the one in the simulator there above the pilot on the right hand side. So now they would put on the oxygen mask. Precautionary at this stage, the oxygen mask? It's partly precautionary, it depends on how concentrated the acrid smoke is. Obviously you can get to a situation where the dust is so concentrated in the flight deck they can't see the instruments. But, but unlikely at this stage. And what's the plane doing at this stage in the, terms the of aircraft, altitude? The aircraft and is angle. now starting to descend and in a moment, although the, you are getting this torching, you are getting a small amount of thrust. Now what happens eventually, so much debris is built up in the engine that the engine actually fails. How long have we got like this? They were at 35,000 feet. Typically, an aircraft would glide with no engines at 1,000 to 1,200 feet a minute. So they could be up here 30 minutes trying to get those engines started. Which sounds long, but isn't that long, particularly if you're over a big stretch of water like the Atlantic. Well, look, Captain Redrop, thank you very much. And it does give us uh, some idea as to what's going on. And that's the view from the cockpit, if you like. It is quite frightening, even in uh, a simulator, and I think it goes some way to explaining why the decision has been taken to close British airspace completely.